Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome back to the channel. We've got the Sharp VZ3000 back on the desk again. We have ordered the belts for it. Came in two packages. Uh, each set of belts was like £15 something each and like pound delivery. Uh, hopefully this that belt looks way too small. There it is. Right, so we got the a kit of three belts there which are for the tape deck and then hopefully this is going to be long enough this is a belt for the uh, platter the record player uh, which is two belts you've got the door opening one and obviously the the platter belt and yeah, we've got a couple of little cleaning cloths in there as well it's not too bad so both of those were about 15 pound each um, i've got them both for 35 quid uh, delivered so that's not bad. I just hope that belt is long enough. I did find, um, I've got the service manual for this and I did find the part number for it, uh, which is this one up here. The MBL TH0080 AF00 is the platter belt. And it's actually an FPM um, 25.0, which is basically it's a 25 inch belt, which works out to be 635 mil by 10 mil by 0.8 mil so we might measure that belt when we've uh, when we put it on just check the size of it well, i've got a, uh, a subscriber asking me for the size of the belt and wants me to measure measure the platter i have sent him the information i've got from the service manual but he wants me to measure the platter for him so i shall do that uh, right so i'm just going to get this uh platter the record deck out of here um, if you want to see how to do that, look back at the old video of where I stripped this down before. Um, but it's basically, we just got the four screws left in the back of this unit now. So we'll undo them and pop the platter out. The platter. Not the platter, the platter. If I can remember myself. All right, let's lift this beast up and spin it around. Not the lightest of things in the world. Yes, yeah, so we've just got our four screws. I think it was down here. Wrong screwdriver. That's better. Okay, so we'll just tilt that forward. There are a couple of connections, if I remember, that come out the back. There's that one down the bottom there. Was it just that one or was it two? I'm just gonna slowly lift this out. Can't remember if there was one or two connections down there. Oh, there we go. This one on the side as well. So that's those two, we'll just unplug. Oh, and we have to take this, we have to take the play buttons off the front as well, or the control buttons. So that is that. Now I can lift this up and out of the way. Put that somewhere safe, I'm not gonna kick it. All right, let's lay this down a second. Right, and if we, you remember in the last video, we put this belt on there just to test it, which was off an old Technics one I had. But obviously this belt was too small. It was really tight. I wouldn't fit around that platter when I put it on there. And uh, I only played it for a minute or two and that belt snapped, but I think the, uh, the belt was going anyway. It's still got some good spring in it actually. Yeah, it's obviously at a weak point, but so that was no good. Someone also commented on my last video. It's like, oh, you can get into this through the front. You don't take everything out, but you tell me how you're going to get a belt in through the front when you've got this solid metal plate on there. And also, you know, the front is covered in plastic. This, you tell me how you're going to get a belt in. 
through the front of that. I do not know with the light. Unless you start, you know, looking at taking doors off and stuff, but I think that's just as bad as opening the back up, I think. I don't think you could wedge it in through there. You've got a risk of, like, scratching the belt and nicking it. And I think he was just trying to be funny. So, yeah, you're not getting the belt in through the front. And if it was that easy, I'm sure many other people would change the belt on these. Right, so let's measure the platter for Mahinda. Right, so measuring across there, that is 228 mil. Yeah, 228, 228 mil. So that's what the measurement across there is. Actually, let's get this belt out and just measure this, see if it is um, 25 inches. It's obviously folded in half. That should be 12 and a half inches. So let's just rest that on there. Put the end down there. And yeah, that is 12 and a half. It's about 12 and a, well, it is pretty much 12 and a half inches. So we know we got the right size, so that's good. Who would have thought that service manual being correct? Right, so we're all good to go. Our belts should fit on here. So let's remember, how did we get this off before? I'm sure I took this board out. What is it? I had another comment that said, just take the four screws out the corner. Out a corner of what? It's off of this. Pete, I'm sure I did that. I'm sure I took these four screws out. Let's have a look. Just at the top and bottom of this long arm, you got the four screws, which means you've got to take this board off. So yeah, I'm sure I had to do that before as well. I can't remember where my screws go. I'm sure I undid this connector. Got a screw under these wires that have just got a little, little cable tie on them. Not a cable tie, but a little bit of wire to retain the cables. Get that out of the way. That was in there. Yeah, you can't get to these bottom ones without taking this board off. There's one, two, the other screws are buried under this ball of wires down here. I'll just leave that screw in there. Now we should enough, have enough room just to move this slightly. We've got some wires curled up underneath there. So we just want to slide that board up a bit. And do those bottom screws. Is that what I did? Is that what I did? Just want to be careful, you're not going to pull any wires. Yeah, so that should be lifted up enough. The thing is, you've got that. Let me see if I can show you. You've kind of like got that big sort of black wheel, that big sort of nut down there. You just need to get your belt underneath that and around it. I think in the last video when I did this, I made a bit of a ball like I'm sure I took this centre pin and all sorts out. So really, you just need to move this board just so you can undo the four scr screws on this bracket and then you should be able to lift it up enough. I'm watching all your wires. So I want to try and show you how I'm doing this. Just to show you lot, the viewers. Rest it against my belly to stop it from moving. It's there, so you can see the, the thing I've got to get under. Without pulling too many wires. So there, so we've got it around that. 
once you've got it under there, you're good to go. I did clean all this. I did clean the the, the side of the platter before because it had all um, the old previous belt was like melted on there. So I have already cleaned it all off. Uh, that's it. We've got that sort of dropped around there now. Just going to leave it hanging over the top, so I can sort of pull it through the other side a bit. Trying not to sort of squash the belt too much. Right, it's so really I want to get the whole belt on the top, so I can just wrap it around the platter easier. So I think we've done that now, so. Right, so all you gotta do is fiddle around with this for half an hour until you get it on. All right, let's zoom out what is the easiest way of doing this. No wonder people don't bother. It's getting a bit around the bottom that's awkward with this board in the way. I think I've got it wrapped around the bottom now. Right, oh, damn it. <laughs> right, let me see if there's an easier way. I'm sure this doesn't make a difference. worst bit is trying to get it around that, that bottom because there's not much room around there to work. There's a bit more room taking that center pin off. Don't you come off now. All right, well that's the main thing that is around the drum. All right, so that's the main part with a bit of fiddling. We've got it on there. A bit of patience needed probably. So there's now we need to stretch it around this motor, which I think last time to get it around this motor, we'll just undo this bracket. Just to give us a bit more room. I think it's just gonna make it a bit easier for us. It's just a fiddly job.
Just going to give that, that spindle a quick clean again. Just with a bit of IPA I've got in a bottle and a cotton bud. Yeah, there's no dirt coming off that, so that's still clean from last time. Just going to let that dry off because I don't want the IPA on the on the rubber belt. So now, without making this belt slide off again, just want to get in there. I'm not going to use a screwdriver, that's just silly. Right, let's just pull that out. I'm just going to put that in there to hold it just so I can slide my spindle over that belt like so. So the belt is now on the motor spindle. It's going to hold this in place quite tight. moving. Right, let's try and get a screw in there. There we go. Okay, that's in there nice and tight. Let's just put this washer back on here in the circlip. So I just need to hold the platter up a bit to get this circuit back on and make sure it doesn't go flying across the room. So when you're dealing with these clips, always hold your finger behind it or on top of it rather, because they have a tendency to just go shooting across the room never to be seen again. This one I'm going to just push on. Where's my little fires? That'll probably get it on. Like that. <laughs> no, I saw that hit back here. Where's it gone? I think it's gone inside or underneath. That pinged over here. No, 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 no. Let me find that. Right, five minutes of looking. I found it. It's just gone on to my shelf. <laughs> that was lucky. Sure, you could probably find a replacement, but that would be a bugger. All right, let's try and get this on again without making it fly across the room. Easy, easy, easy peasy. God damn. All right, let's put this. Rack it back on again. Let's take that screwdriver out of there. So it's definitely easier taking this off just so you can lift this up and give you a bit more room to get your hands around underneath and get that belt on. It's probably definitely worth doing that. Or unless there's another little technique. All right, so this should now spin freely. Which it is. 
well, apart from a little bit of rubbing, but that's because it's laying down and it's not screwed in yet. Right, so let's get this back together. Right, now the belt for this one. I think the same again, we'll take the motor off. I can't remember if I changed that one, that was really stiff. I didn't think I had one that was big enough for that, I'm not sure. Anyway, that one's going because we've got new ones. And if you was going to change all these, make sure you clean your, your belts around there, especially if all the belts have gone all to goo which is nice, we've got a couple of cleaners in there, uh, but I already cleaned these. So yeah, that's a square belt. Yeah, it's a lot smaller than that one I had on there. So we've just got to try and get this one under this belt, under this pulley rather. just keeping it taut just get that round the motor the motor spindle and then pop that back in its place should be like a little locating hole it fits in as well as those screw holes So that's it, that's all sitting nicely. So let's curl that cable tidy back around there. Just plug this one back in. So, yeah, so that's all looking good. So this can now go back into its case. That's spinning freely now. Now it's all connected up. Right, let's put this back in and then we get the uh, cassette deck out and change the belts for that one and I'm having a cup of tea first all right I just better say thank you to Kath Eames a subscriber to the channel and a friend bought me this mug up the other week Mr fix it if a man says he will fix it he will there's no need to remind him every six months thanks Kath cheers nice cup of tea I'm gonna sit outside in the sunshine with it Right, so this is ready to go back, apart from one thing I did want to check. While I was looking at the schematics and uh, the parts list, it said that there are some lights for the stylus and the record player, the door. And indeed there is, well that's a light down there for the, we've got lights on the front there for the side a side b and the repeats oh no side a side b is there so there is a light down here but that is is that for the platter and how would you get in there to see I'm not unsticking the front right you can just about see them there right so we can have a light here there's a bulb there which is our spindle so i'm not sure how this is going to slide out here because this is in the way probably pop up but then we've also got one for the record it should light up down there I'm not sure how they would come off go and look at the service manual see if that tells me anything so this front panel does seem independent it does wiggle it looks like that might come off separately but I just want to double check I don't want to force anything and break this I've come so far now Right, go look at the um, the record deck and stuff is now done. Um, let's have a look at the tape player, get the belts on there. I'll probably make another video of maybe uh, checking the lights on that on that turntable. Uh, right, so let's get into taking this off, changing these belts. 
So we've just got this belt on here, which is just for our um, our counter. Tape counter that goes up the top there. That's just going to come off of there. Come on. Should probably uh, zoom in on here. Nice right, so there, and then hopefully uh, you can see the belt back just under there. That's the uh, motor. I don't think you can get to it to the back. I think it's probably got to come off. I haven't even seen the other little belt yet because you've got three belts to change. We've got in the pack, we've got the um, tape counter belt. Um, and another belt, which is probably under here somewhere, the, probably the capstan belt, and then you, you drive motor belt. But let's undo these four screws in the corner, I think. See if we can get to underneath here. Hopefully this one's a bit easier than the, the record deck. That's so our four corner screws. We're going to have to undo some cables at the top. Yeah, I think it's just being held on by the connectors on the top of there. Connectors which I could probably get to from the back. Being careful because things are probably just going to fall out. Let's see how we get on. That's a little one. It's going to be fun getting back on again. Oh, it's there unhooked. Probably be best to unhook them first. Now, where are we at? Ah, there we go. Now we can get in here. Brilliant. Right, so we should just be able to undo this few screws on the back, I presume. Actually, we can unplug this as well. Can completely remove the tape deck, which will be easier. We've got another couple of little plugs down here. So that's it, that's out of there. These connectors can only go on one way, so. Should be fine connecting that back up. All right, let's move this out of the way now. All right, so if that, if that should stay on there, that should be no problem. It should just be a matter of taking this back plate off. Being careful with these screws. I don't want to break these plastic posts they're going into. Just want to hold this in because I don't want anything springing out. I want to make sure. I know where everything goes back together. Yep, so that's it, as simple as that. Leave that in the correct place because that arm sits on this pin. So let's just pop this belt off. That isn't actually too bad. Is a bit soft, but it is springing back to springing back to shape. That seems okay, that belt, but it's getting changed anyway. Right, now this one's just come off of there. Slide it out from underneath. Yeah, it doesn't seem too bad. It's not super bad. Where does that black come from? Yeah, black out of there. I don't want that black gunk is in there, some sort of grease. Get it off my hands before I spread it everywhere. Right, so I'm just going to take some 99% alcohol. So my PA, just going to Clean these, uh, clean these pulleys up. 
That's the stuff I use, isopropyl alcohol by Hexil. Get off Amazon, what's this, a one litre container. 99.9% alcohol. That costs about six quid or so, six or seven quid. God knows what the prices are now, but it doesn't cost too much and it lasts for ages. And it can also take the sticky labels off stuff. So just gonna give this a good old clean up. Not filthy, a little bit dirty. Clean the motor pulley. Again, that's not too dirty. And we'll try and get in here as well. You can see some dirty marks on the outside of this pulley, but it's not too bad. It's quite clean inside. At least the rubber hasn't deteriorated and it's full of black gunk. All right, so that's all clean. Just give that a couple of seconds to dry off the isopropyl alcohol. Get my old belts away so I don't use them again. Okay, let's get our other fresh set of belts out. So that's our th three we've got here. Let's compare this with the old one. The old one's a lot thinner. The new one is a lot looser than the old one. That'll be interesting. So it's a thicker belt and bigger. Thing is though, you never know whether this has been changed before or not. So I'll try and pull this through. It's a big old belt. Yeah, and that's no good, is it? Look at it. <laughs> well, that one's going to need to be sent back. Because that is the wrong size. You can kind of like see there how much bigger that belt is. I'm not stretching them, that's loose. It's like a centimetre bigger than the one they've supplied. You're going to have to go and send that one back. But this belt seems alright anyway, so... At least you know how to change the belts. Giving you one lesson. Yeah, and this black stuff everywhere. So how's this one compared with that? That one's a good size, it is a little bit thicker. But size don't seem too bad. And the other one was for the tape counter, which looks, the new one that's supplied looks a lot bigger. But I'm not sure whether I'll replace that one or not. Right, well, let's see what happens with that for now. There's a little pin down there, and I can't remember what side that little plastic piece was, whether it's the left or right. This is easy enough to pull out again. We'll soon find out. It's 50-50 chance. Could watch the video back. Right, so that's back together with the old belt now. 
and a new one. One of the old ones, one of the new ones. Uh, let's get this all back together. I'm just going to put it in enough to test it now. Because I'm going to take this out again to have a look at them um, LED lights. I'll put it in, make sure they're working. And I'll probably do a different video, another video on the LED lights. Because otherwise this one will just be silly long. Right, just put our two connectors back in the back. If I haven't just trapped one somewhere, where's the other one? Oh, that's there. Ugh. Check you ain't trapped your wires anywhere. Oh, that's it. We're all connected and back together. Wasn't too worried about the tape belts. They weren't. They don't seem too bad. I will send them back and get um, some proper ones out. So let's turn this round, plug it in, and give it a demo. Let's plug it in. Let's turn it on. Lights, we have got a light in there, that light does work. I'm not sure if this light underneath there works. I don't think that one works to light the record up. Uh, right, phono, phono, phono. Got no speakers on at the moment. Right, let's see if the uh, new belt is any good with the door. Opens okay. Pop a white label record in there. And is it going to close properly? That's the test. It needed help before. And there, it's closing. And we're spinning okay. Has the needle automatically gone over? I don't know. I can't see. Too many lights in it. Oh um, yeah, that's already playing. I can hear the slight tink, 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 tink. That's working. Let me see if I can uh, put my mic near it. Might be able to hear the... I'll boost that volume in uh, post-edit. Hopefully you can hear that. Turn these lights out. So we've got side A lit. We have got the little light in here for the needle but we definitely haven't got the light down the bottom that should be shining on the record that one down there definitely isn't working this one is actually let's get rid of that let's take that out of there Right, so that is good. The door is opening and closing on its own. The sensors are working, hasn't detected a record, so yep, nothing's spinning or anything. Let's quickly connect some speakers up. Right, so here we go. I've just connected up a couple of crappy speakers just to test this out again. Hopefully I've got one of my old uh, house and garage records. Hopefully that won't be picked up by YouTubers copyrighted or anything. And send them my ad revenue. In she goes, in she spins. Playing good out of both speakers. Can use that button to move the stylus across. There we go, it's playing fine. Got your speed selection down here if you had a 45 in there.
So everything's looking good. We we'll flip it over to the other side of the record. It will now go over and play side B, which is another stylus on the back. Now there is still a problem with side B. It was playing quieter before. And you can hear it's playing quieter again now. I haven't adjusted the, adjusted the volume. So it is playing a bit quieter. Could be the styluses. Now they're not special styluses. They are, um, I think they're quite cheap to buy. But there's definitely a sound difference. Side B is a lot quieter than side A. Still playing fine. But you can hear it's just not booming out. It just hasn't got that sort of bass to it. It's just very quiet and tinny. Now whether that's a stylus or not, I don't know. What I might try and do is swap the styluses over, put A into B and B into A, because they're both exactly the same, and see if that makes any difference. But <clears throat> this is a video. We'll leave this one now for now. It's been probably too long. Change the belts in the record player. Change the belts in the tape. Like I say, fast forward and rewind. These have got some good, good torque on them now. They're not slipping. All you've got to do is put your finger on it. If they're easy to stop, then sort of your belts are knackered. But there we go. That sound is picking up again now. So there's definitely a problem with the B-side stylus or something in that. But we'll take a look at that in another video and maybe having a look at this bottom lamp, see if we can get in there, get that working. Right, that's it. I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, we've got this belt changed. Um, wasn't actually too bad. Uh, the main thing is getting it all out of the unit. You'll have to go back to my first video of when I took it all apart to see how sort of, what a ball like that was. Um, but really, it's not too bad. It's a bit fiddly getting the new belt on. Changing the belts on the tape is easy. The tape is making that funny noise again. That one. Um, I fixed that in the last video. There's a switch behind there that needed cleaning, so I'm going to try and clean that again. Then we might look at changing the light under here. We need to look at the whether it's. I've just swapped the styluses over um, from front to back. Styluses are fine. So it could just be um, a cartridge and you'd probably have to look into getting that. See if I can swap the cartridges over. Uh, but that's it. If you're just doing a belt change, it's not too bad. You probably take you an hour or two, but it's worth it for one of these machines, especially to keep it, keep it alive and keep it out of the trash. Uh, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, one day we'll get this fully working and all back together again. But please like, please comment. Please subscribe and hopefully I shall see you in the next one.